Good morning, good evening, and good day. Thank you so much for watching Attack Power Gaming. Today we're going to tackle the age-old question of which is the best medium tank in Steel Division 2. If you enjoy this content, please drop a like and consider subscribing. It really helps the channel a lot. Let's dive right in. Now up on the screen here, I have put the four most common and basic, generally accepted main battle medium tanks in Steel Division 2. We have two Axis Faction and two Allied Faction. It just happened to work out that way. So we have the Panzer 4H and the Stug 3G for the Axis and the T-34-76 and the Sherman for the Allies. Now, before we get into the into the weeds of the details here. I tried to pick what just what the most common variants of these tanks are. Yes, there's the Panzer 4G, the Panzer 4J, the Stug 4 technically, the T-34-76 observer, observer 1943, the Char, the Sherman 3, the the Sherman DD. There, there's like 10 variants of every one of these medium tanks. But f on the whole, they're stats are extremely similar yes the stug 4 and the panzer 4j you know have actually have distinctly different stats but these are the most common versions you'll find the T absorber 1943 234 actually has weaker armor about 15 millimeters less i believe so you know that that's definitely a difference but i took the stronger one for this comparison there's a slight difference in price the panzer 4j has different armor as well but these are the most common ones if you look in the armor you'll see these come up the most often the shermans are basically all the same so i just picked one of the shermans they're essentially the same all the way across the board so these are the four most common medium tanks you'll find in the game and the ones that basically make up the meta at this moment in time these are the tanks you generally want to be using to function effectively in Steel Division 2 at this point. And these are the ones you're going to see most often. Now, medium tanks generally fall within 60 to 80 points, as you can see here. These are generally your medium point tanks in terms of their point costs. Across the board here, the cheapest is obviously the T-3476, and the most expensive are the Sherman and Stug 3, but the Panzer IV is only five points less than both of those. So it's a pretty tight spread, with only the T-34 really coming in at a significantly lower price than the other two. Continuing on, let's go down to our stats here at the bottom. First being speed, the Panzer 30, uh, the Panzer IV being the slowest at 31 kilometers per hour. The Stug and Sherman, uh, well, I'm, this is off-road speed. I'm sorry, I should say off-road speed here. Uh, the Stug and Sherman are tied at 33 kilometers an hour, and the T-34 has a whopping 40 kilometers an hour, which is a difference. And then on the road, the Panzer IV comes up the slowest at 39 kilometers an hour. The Stug and Sherman are once again tied at 41, and the T-34 takes it with a 49 kilometer per hour speed. Stealth-wise, we have medium across the board, and they all have very low optics. I cut that off in the stroke. Sorry about that. They all have very low optics and will need something to spot for them. So based on these stats alone, the T-34 is obviously the choice if you want a fast unit. So if you want a unit that can really get around, get around corners and stuff, this is the unit to pick is the speedy one here, the T-34. But again, those are just the very basic stats here at the bottom. If we move up into the armor ratings here, this is where we start to see a little bit more variety. The Sherman comes in top. So the front armor is what you're going to be most worried about. They all have strong top armor, okay? The Sherman has the best front armor here with 100 millimeters of frontal armor. The T-34 and Stug come in second with 90 millimeters, and the Panzer IV comes in the weakest with 75 millimeters of front armor. In terms of back and sides, they're all obviously about half or a little bit more or less than half of their front armor. Uh, these numbers don't really matter, I'm going to be honest with you, because if someone's shooting you in the side of the back, they're they're going to pen and they're going to do a lot of damage. So you really just don't ever want to be in a position where your tanks are getting hit in the back or in the sides. The armor you want to worry about is that front armor. And here we can see the Sherman takes the cake with 100 millimeters of armor. And that is between 90 and 100. That is a difference. Uh, I know it seems like just 10 millimeters of armor. When we get up into the gun penetration values, you'll see why that 10 millimeters actually really starts to matter, especially in a showdown of the medium tanks. So we come up here to the guns. Well, let's just look across the board here. All of the tanks, except for the Stug 3, have at least two machine guns. The Panzer IV has two MG34s. The T-34 has two DTs. And the Sherman has a whopping three 
machine guns with a mix of Brownings and M2s here. The Sherman by far has the strongest mix of machine guns. If you ever try to run an infantry squad at a Sherman, you'll find out very quickly how fast they will suppress units and how quick, how effective their machine guns are. This is probably the strongest of the four. I shouldn't say probably. Definitely the strongest of the four in terms of infantry support. So let's get that right out of the way. If you're just supporting an infantry attack, you know, you just want to lay down more fire, the Sherman is the way to go. These three machine guns do a heck of a lot of damage and can really drive down opponent's infantry really quickly. So be aware, this is easily the best machine gun layout on that Sherman. The Shug has the worst. Only one machine gun really will not actually lay down all that much suppression. Okay, that's important to note. That is a difference. And the Panzer IV comes in third. The MG34 is stronger than the DT machine gun here with the Russian slower machine gun fire, lower suppression, all that good stuff. So in terms of infantry support, the Sherman and Panzer IV are the top two and the Stug and the T-34 come up behind. So that's our support weapon in terms of the machine guns. But now let's get to the real meat and potatoes, the main gun. This is what we're all worried about here. So, in terms of main gun, the Axis tanks have exactly the same gun. I know they have a different name, but they're, they're the, exactly the same. They have a 75mm AP cannon that pierces 135 millimeters of penetration, does 8 damage. We're not going to worry about the suppress or the blast, really. If you look across the board, they're all exactly equal, along with the damage. Those are also equal. Accuracy at a 40% here. Range at 1750 and rate of fire at 7 rounds per minute. Over here in the Allied side, we have the Russian gun with the F-34, 76.2 millimeter AP shell. Has 100 millimeters of pen, same stats here in the middle, 40% accuracy, 1500 meters range, and 6 rounds per minute. The final Allied tank here, the M3 for the Sherman, has a 75 millimeter AP shell, 90 millimeters of penetration, same middle stats here, 45% accuracy with 1,500 meters range and 7 rounds per minute. So, let's start with the most important stat here that we generally tend to look at, and that's the penetration values. And we can see very clearly that the Axis guns take the cake in this case. They have way more penetration than the Allied equivalents here, with 35 millimeters more penetration than their allied counterparts. This is a big difference and also and allows the Axis tanks to easily pierce the front armor of either allied tank in this case. So that's really important to understand that you are getting a much stronger gun in terms of penetration while using the Stug or the Panzer IV. These even have a chance of piercing heavier tanks in a general sense. So these guys can actually pierce Tigers, for example, or Panthers, you know, their own heavy tanks and also T-34 85s. These guys can actually pierce those tanks. These, on the other hand, really cannot. They do not have the penetration value to pierce those heavier tanks. They are going to be at a loss when facing them. They're just going to have to overwhelm them with fire or find a flanking move to kill heavier tanks. So that is definitely a big difference. We come down here. The next big difference is that 1,750 meter range for the Axis guns and the 1,500 meter range for the Allied guns. This is also a very big difference. Axis weapons get a free 250 mil uh, meters excuse me, to fire at the Allies before the Allies tanks are even in range to fire back. This is really important and gives a big advantage in terms of long range firepower to the Axis side. In terms of rate of fire, only the T-34 comes up a little short. It comes up one round a minute less, which is a difference. I mean, it, it, it doesn't actually work out to be exactly six rounds a minute. Like if you sat there and watched the game for one minute, this thing would not fire exactly six rounds per minute. And remember, veterancy changes this rate of fire as well. So if you're taking your tanks in vet, which I do suggest you do with at least one vet, uh, preferably two, depending on your veterancy, the one the the vet really increases this significantly. One vet in generally increases it by one, and that's not exact, but about one. And then two generally increases it by about three. So you can push it up to about ten rounds a minute, which is a big difference. Now the reason that these so how does the, then the question that we beg the question here, how do the allied tanks even fight the German tanks for the most part because, you know, that longer range and that higher penetration value? Well, here's the difference down here is that armor rating. For example, the Panzer IV only has 75 millimeters of armor. In other words, the T-34, the allied tanks over here only need a hundred millimeters or 90 millimeters to easily pen 
this Panzer IV. On the other hand, the Stug is a little bit more resistant in terms of damage. It does have 90 millimeters of pen, but both of these tanks do have the ability of piercing that Stug even at some range. So it's really important to understand that these medium tanks can very much kill the Axis medium tanks despite the range and power difference. The problem with these allied tanks is they're going to have a hard time fighting outside of their weight class. In other words, fighting heavy tanks above them is going to be very difficult. Now, one more thing that's really important to note, the Sherman does have one special, let's give it, let's call it a talent. They have what are called stabilizers. Nowhere here is it noted that you had no, would have no way of knowing unless someone told you, but basically the Sherman has a much higher accuracy on the move and aims much more quickly while moving and basically getting into position. So you'll notice if two tanks notice themselves immediately and one of them is a Sherman, the Sherman will fire sooner and will seem to aim faster on its first shot than the other tanks because of that hidden stat called stabilizer, which makes a Sherman way more effective at closer range generally than all of their counterparts. So, the question you've all been waiting for, which of these medium tanks is the best? Yes! Well, to be honest with you, it's completely my opinion, but I'm going to say the Stug 3 is probably the most balanced and versatile of the four tanks. Why am I saying this? Because the Stug is able to take out heavier tanks outside of its class, T-3045s, Tigers, these sort of things you will run into. It has longer range, right? It has that 1750 meter range, which makes it really effective at long range. It does have a fair amount of armor, so it can actually bounce a lot of shells at longer ranges if you're fighting at long range. So it's it's definitely, and it's a teeny bit faster than the, the Panzer IV. So overall, I think the Stug functions better than the Pan its equivalent Axis Panzer IV. Now, the, I will note, this is in a general sense. At close range, allied tanks are better. At longer range, Axis tanks are generally better. If I'm just picking one, if I had to have a, a division with one of them in it, I would pick the Stug III, but I am also mostly an Axis player, so understand I am a little bit biased. In terms of supporting infantry pushes, the Sherman takes the cake by far. Forest fighting, infantry pushes, this is the tank you want. In terms of town fighting, generally the T-34 is the best of the choices because of that increased speed. It can really pop in and out of buildings. The Stug 3 is absolutely awful in towns because it can do no maneuvering whatsoever because of that fixed gun in the front. The Panzer IV is really slow for moving in towns and stuff, but again, it's a little bit better than at least the Stug 3. So understand that each one of these medium tanks has a very specific role. Also understand the T-34 is the cheapest by a good bid. To buy two of these, it costs 120 points. To buy two of these, it costs 160 points. 120 points is a phase for Maverick. You know, 120 points each tick, you can call in two T-34s. On the other hand, you cannot call in all of these equivalents. So understand that each of these tanks functions uniquely. Despite all being medium tanks and being considered equivalent and kind of, you know, all fitting into the same shell and these are the kind of tanks you want in your, your divisions, which you absolutely do, they do not all function the same and should not be played the same way. These Axis tanks generally want to sit back a little far and try to take advantage of those higher penetration values and higher ranges, while the Allied tanks tend to get want to get Get in a little bit closer and get a little bit dirtier with their play and you know Sherman's especially because of their triple machine gun can be a little bit more aggressive at close range because they have a better chance of suppressing infantry squads before they can really get close and use those AT weapons on them. So that is a comparison between these different medium tanks. If you enjoyed this please drop a comment, a like, and subscribe to the channel down below and then if you want to see any other comparisons we can do divisions, weapons, all that kind of stuff please drop a comment down below with your suggestions. Thank you so much for for watching and have a fantastic day.